the era of modern McLaren, there have so far been two long tails, the 675 and 600. In my opinion, they are the best cars produced in McLaren Automotive's 10-year existence, so this new LT, the 675 successor, has an awful lot to live up to. It is based on the 720S, which itself is frighteningly fast, so to explain how they've made quick even quicker, here is product specialist for the Super Series, Shane Harmon. Thank you so much for agreeing to talk us round this. Now I'm going to get it right. 765 LT. Because Correct. I'm, it's obviously an, a sort of a numerical anagram of mm -hmm. 675 LT. So I'm going to try and, if I make a mistake. Easy mistake. Exactly. Let's start with, I suppose, the aero and the looks, because mm -hmm. that's the most obvious thing when you first sure. see the car. And actually, LT is more of a long nose, isn't it? Because it's longer overall, but actually the, the nose is the, the thing Correct. that's extended more. So yeah, the car is fractionally longer than the standard 720. We're 57 millimeters longer. Aero-wise, uh, aero is uh, what dictates the styling. Um, so being McLaren, being an LT, uh, we are very much uh, a function focus. Starting with the front of the car, the splitter is much longer uh, than found on the standard 720S. Uh, we've also got much more aggressive uh, aero down the sides of the car. Uh, and then also you can see we've got these uh, fender vents uh, which relieve a lot of the pressure in the front wheel arch. You've got to have fender vents these days, haven't you? So Absolutely, for, for 100%. And then as we move further down the side of the car, uh, again, we've got much more aggressive uh, aero running all the way down. Um, we're making sure we're still feeding the, the radiators, the high temperature radiators, uh, and smoothing the airflow down the side of the car. We've also got a new uh, rear blade uh, at the back there, and also a much, much bigger uh, rear wing as well. Absolutely. Um, we can obviously see these bits down here. Um, in terms of the aero as well, you were telling me earlier that, in fact, sort of one of the, the biggest gains is from the fact that this ride's lower at the front. Mm -hmm. You've kept the ride height the same at the rear, but it's, yep. is it five mil lower at yes, the front? Yes, so uh, front ride height is down five mil. Uh, that pitches the whole car forward, uh, which is an instant gain uh, in downforce, uh, makes the car look a lot more aggressive as well. Nice bit of rake in there. Absolutely. Excellent. Um, as we're moving down this way, let's talk about wheels mm. and brakes, because the brakes are quite yes. special on this, yes. aren't they? So, so the varying levels, I think, as absolutely. well. Absolutely. So a standard, uh, you get the, the caliper from the center, uh, which is a single monoblock design, super stiff, super strong. Uh, the disc itself is carryover, the standard disc uh, from the 720S, uh, but you can option uh, the, the much improved disc from the Senna, which has been cured for seven months, has a huge thermal capacity on it as well, if you want to track your car. Absolutely. And I'm assuming, have you made any other changes? Because this, the Senna, uh, one of the things that sort of really leapt out at me um, with that, and in fact, 600LT as well, the, mm -hmm. the, the brake feel is something that I think mm -hmm. McLaren is becoming really well known for. Yeah. So we've done a lot of work on the booster. Uh, the brake booster uh, is bespoke for, for this car. Uh, we've learned from Senna and 600 as well, like you say. Excellent. Well, look forward to that. And there's something about the, the cooling in these mm -hmm. as well, is that right? So we have a kind of a Formula One inspired uh, integrated caliper cooling oh, yeah. uh, on there itself. Um, it sits just behind the new wheel. Uh, the wheel looks similar to the 10-spoke, which is found on the 720S, uh, but it's actually considerably lighter. We've, we've reduced a lot of the, the weight on it, um, and then it's wrapped in uh, Trofeo R tyres, track focus, much, much stickier. Yeah, which are presumably bespoke to... Correct, to yes, this, we've worked with car. Pirelli on those, and they are bespoke for 765LT. And the... Um, in there? Titanium wheel bolts. titanium, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, every little gram helps. So as we walk down the side of the car, let's uh, talk about the chassis, because you've mm -hmm. got wider front track. Yes, is so right? we're six mil uh, wider. Uh, that improves uh, stability and handling of the car, uh, and also, again, makes it look a bit more aggressive. Chassis-wise, suspension-wise, we use the same basis of the Proactive Chassis Control 2. It's our hydraulic interlinked suspension, um, but we have bespoke spring rates, 4LT being track-focused, and we've also introduced a a uh, secondary helper spring uh, as well. Okay, so just explain what the helper spring sure. does. Why, what's, what's the benefit of, of that? Uh, so under, if you can imagine a suspension strut uh, and spring under full rebound, uh, if the kind of uh, front tire actually loses contact with the ground, the spring can be, it can max out. Uh, it can no longer 
uh, go, get any bigger if you like. A helper spring uh, will maintain pressure on that spring uh, and insurance engaged uh, all the time. Absolutely. Steering, does that change at all? Is it? Um, the steering rack uh, is similar. We have uh, quickened up uh, the ratio. Uh, again, suits the character of the car, uh, more direct steering as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, whilst we're here as well, because there's a lot of weight saving, mm -hmm. weight saving has obviously been one of the yes. sort of the key aspects of the LTs you've done so far. I know you've got 100 kilos, I think, out of 600 LT. Have you matched it with this? Not quite. It was <sighs> almost impossible to get 100 kilos out of uh, a standard 720S being so light as it is. We're 80 kilos uh, lighter. Uh, and like Still so, pretty impressive, 80 kilos. Yes, it gives us a dry weight of 1,229 kilos. Wow. Uh, very, very is that fully indeed. optioned up? So that's kind of literally as light as dry you can light get is, yes, correct. Of, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and I can see obviously one of the things you've done is, is up here. So mm -hmm. we've got polycarbonate back here. Yeah, so basically the rear half of the car, uh, the rear windscreen, uh, C pillars, and rear three quarter is all polycarbonate. Um, the front half of the car, the windscreen, and the side windows uh, is a much thinner glass than found on the standard. 720s. In total, it saves six kilos from standard 720s, which and that's obviously high. Exactly, car, it's so. a good six kilos to save. Yeah, absolutely. And we wheels, I think we mentioned earlier, they're is it 22 kilos all round or something like yes, that? Yes, with so. a combination of the wheels, tyres, uh, and titanium wheel bolts, uh, we save a big 22 kilos, again, uh, which is rotational. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So whilst we're here now, let's talk about the engine. Mm -hmm. So what are we looking at? So we've got obviously 765 PS, which yes. is 754, 55 yep. brake horsepower, Correct. something like that. And then 800 Newton Newton meters, meters of torque, yes, torque which, which is, is 590 foot pounds. Thank you for doing the calculation. And yeah. that's the same as the center. Correct, course, torque, wise, yes. torque wise, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so in order to achieve that, we uh, have a new bespoke piston design, learning from Senna. Uh, we've also got a now a dual fuel pump um, as opposed to the single system we used to run. We've also worked on ensuring the engine is uh, robust enough to handle the increase in power and torque. So we have a new uh, head gasket uh, and also oil pump as well. The exhaust is obviously a yes. big part of, yes. uh, sort of, it's been a big part of LT, mm -hmm. um, hasn't it? So, and this is particularly special because it's fully titanium. Yes, it's completely 100% uh, titanium uh, from headers all the way to the tips. Uh, it's just under 11 kilos. Uh, and saves 3.8 uh, kilos versus the standard 720S exhaust. Wow. Despite having the two additional outlets, uh, we have managed to save weight. Yes, because you've got the, the four exhausts ranged across here now. Now, there's a, there's a cutout here, which I think serves in some purposes because obviously when the wing is up, we'll, we'll get to the wing in a second, so you can see through here. But mm -hmm. also, um, thermal management, I think, is the sort of probably the McLaren speak for it. But, yes, um, absolutely. It spits flames. Yes, being right? an LT, uh, you can expect some flames. Um, so we've had to make a bit of room uh, for those. <laughs> Excellent. I can't wait to see those. Um, this rear wing mm -hmm. is obviously another element to the, um, the whole aero. So it's, it's obviously bigger. Yes, yeah, so the rear wing itself is 20% bigger uh, in comparison to the standard wing on the 720S. Uh, it's also got a much more aggressive design. Uh, and it also sits much higher uh, in the cleaner, free-flowing air, which generates a lot more downforce. Absolutely. And then big old diffuser down there. It's yes. enormous, isn't it? It is. It's a, it's a big thing. Uh, it works very well in conjunction with the new uh, front carbon fibre floor that we have, uh, which is bespoke to LT, uh, and the whole underside uh, is creating a lot of downforce for the car. I see. The um, Looking through there, I can see the gearbox down there. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is perhaps my favorite bit about this yes. car. <laughs> tell, yes. me, tell me about Maybe it. Maybe mine too. So uh, we've optimized the gear ratios and that's been done essentially through a much shorter and aggressive final drive. Uh, so it's 15% uh, more aggressive, uh, which you know gives you mechanical, a much higher increase in mechanical torque, if you like, uh, and the gears come thick and fast. It's very, very exciting. And that's, um, that's actually because Senna had the same final drive yes. as 720S, so this yeah. is the shorter final drive. Yeah, it's, it's the shortest final drive we've ever put in a car. Wow, that should be pretty exciting. Yes. And in terms of performance figures then, mm -hmm. um, what are we looking at for? So, uh, not to 62 miles an hour uh, with 2.8 seconds, uh, which is only 0.1 faster uh, than 720S, but when 
that's because we're traction limited. When you look at 0 to 124 miles an hour, we're 7.2 seconds, uh, which is 0.6 of a second faster than 720S, uh, and 0.4 of a second faster uh, than the Pista from our friends in Italy. <laughs> Um, presumably there's the negative of top speed because if you have short final drive presumably yes. that's, that's slightly lower and also with the with increase in downforce you are ultimately going to get a bit more drag uh, so we're down to 205 miles an hour still still above 200 which I think should be plenty plus. for, for yeah, most so absolutely and thank you very much indeed no problem very kind <laughs> Now obviously I'm going to have a look inside the 765LT as well, but while I'm getting comfortable I thought I'd just mention the colour. This is Nardo Orange, which is a slightly strange name. I mean, naming it after a test track makes sense, just not Nardo, because everyone associates that test track with the Audi colour, Nardo Grey. Anyway, colour aside, I think this is the most aggressive LT that we've seen so far from McLaren. The 675 looked much cleaner and arguably more attractive, but this has real purpose to it, and I love all the sculptural mesh on the rear. By the way, they will be building 765 of these, and we expect prices will start at around £280,000 or $380,000. Anyway, let's see if I've battled past the bolsters on those bucket seats. A lot of the lightweight sort of facets of this car uh, come down to the interior. So if you delete the air con, then that saves 10 kilos. Delete the radio, another one and a half kilos. Uh, this central section here in carbon fibre with the carbon fibre door cards, that saves another two and a half kilos as well. And these seats, these are the optional race seats. So they're the ones basically out of the centre. And over standard, they save 18 kilos. Passenger seats fixed as well if you go for that. So overall, you can create a pretty sparse interior in here, but it's not just about the sort of, that, that adds to the feel, I suppose, um, the visceral feel that you want in a car like this. And the engine mounts much, much stiffer in this. And apparently that really adds to the NVH, the sort of the undesirable noise, vibration and harshness that you don't want in a normal car, but in something like this, it's just gonna bring it more alive. Talking of the engine, by the way, you might have noticed they've got that rather nice sort of, well, porthole onto the engine there. So it feels more part of the cabin. I like that touch, it's very nice indeed. Other things I'm really excited about, well, that gear shift, that's that shorter final drive. Incidentally, some of the materials used in that, uh, the material for the crown and pinion is an F1 grade uh, nickel, nickel chrome. Uh, it's uh, 20NICH, I think, if you want the scientific formula apparently but that's meant to be lighter and harder wearing so that's just a pretty cool thing that you'll never see but is there under the skin but to drive that gearbox i think is going to be really really exciting um, the way it's going to accelerate there's also another thing which we didn't mention which is all about this paddle the downshift paddle it's called limit downshift and on track if you're braking really really hard and you request a downshift now normally if the engine would just say nope you're not there yet but if it's if it's on the cusp it will allow the downshift and it will then basically slip the clutch very slightly and bounce off the limiter it only happens for a second apparently you get a little sort of bah, 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 just as it sort of just as it down changes which sounds pretty exciting to me and yeah Stuff like that. The LTs haven't been bad so far. And this one, it sounds like it's got all the ingredients to be pretty, pretty amazing. Can't wait to drive it. One of it starts. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching that. Please let us know what you think of the car in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell notification icon 